so we're doing sort of a series of trying to survive as long as we can on almost every game mode. Last time we played primary only on resort and made it to round 200 before losing. And today we're playing military only, which is a game mode on medium difficulty, and we're playing on the map Candy Falls. So to start us off, why Candy Falls? While the map might not be the best for the challenge, it's still a pretty good one with a decent track length, amount of water and buildable space. But I mostly chose it because of variety, I don't want to play the same few maps over and over. Last time we chose Geraldo over Isili, because with Geraldo we could use the Quincy action figure to farm and get ourselves a paragon. But this time, playing military only, we have other options to farm, which I will go into shortly. But now that we have other farming methods, should we still choose Geraldo and perhaps go for some Paragon Totems, or should we opt for Isili instead? We're gonna try both heroes, and the first run will be with Geraldo. As for the farming, we'll start the game by saving up to the NFT as soon as possible. But right after that, we wanna get started on building a boat farm, which will bring in some nice income and also start pumping up those numbers for a higher Paragon degree. We also have some more options for farming. We have the middle path snipers whose ability drops a cash crate, and also the tier 5 heli whose ability also drops a cash crate and some extra lives. We also have the submarine, so we can get the energizer to reduce the cooldown for those abilities and thus earn even more money. Another thing that can bring some extra cash is the hooking ability of the pirate lord. We can also use Geraldo's rejuvenation potion to remove the cooldown from all abilities and this will bring a lot of extra cash from a sniper farm. So, as you can understand, we will have a lot more cash this time than last. So, we should now not only be able to get both Paragons, but we should also be able to get some Paragon Totems to get a really high degree. We're going to get a lot of Snipers, filling the whole map with nearly 200 of them. Pair this with an Energizer and Geraldo's Rejuv Potions and we should be swimming in it. Now, we want to get most of the pops on the ace, while we let the income from the boats stand for most of the degree increment toward the boat paragon, so we'll get started on our flying fortress. We'll be using Geraldo's invisibility potion in this episode too. The boat farm has camo detection, but eventually DDTs will be a bit too much for them to handle, so we'll need to give camo detection to the flying fortress at least. You can also use the bottom path Mordar or a top path sub to decamo the DDTs. And we'll also get a Cripple Moab to help us survive as long as possible so we can build a lot of Paragon Totems. Which, by the way, is the only debuff we'll have in this game mode. Eventually the fortified DDT started becoming quite an issue, but we were just about finished with our Paragon Totems and managed to get all 45 needed for a max degree Doomship. Now we have enough DPS and Camo DPS to get around for quite a while, and can now continue farming and placing more Paragon Totems for the Navarch. I don't know how many times I pressed the sniper ability button this game, but it sure was a few thousand presses. And at this point you may wonder, don't you have enough money already? I mean you haven't sold the NFT yet, and yeah, I did farm more than enough this game, and I actually even forgot that I had the NFT because I had so much money. But we will use more of the money than you might think, because of something I will show you later in the video. But now we have enough Paragon Totems and can get our max degree Navarch. Next we go ahead and sell all the snipers because we are done farming and we want to clean up the map. And next we can start thinking about what tier 5s we want to get. And well, we don't have a lot of towers to choose from in this game mode so we'll of course get every single one, except for the Trade Empire. Now after that, what towers do we want to fill the remaining space with? Most likely, the 204As will be one of the best options, but I have a cooler one. I'm going to fill the entire left side with Rocket Storm Dartling Gunners and tech bot all of them to fire at the same time. A massive Gorgon Storm. And on the right side, we'll get three small armies of snipers, one of each path. And placing the top path at the top is a good idea because of this house right here. We want to place some of the main mob snipers so that the house blocks their sight. This will ensure that all snipers do not fire at the exact same time. If all snipers can see the whole map, then this would happen, but we want some that are out of sync so that we have a constant stream of stuns. 
And as for the water space, I placed bottom path subs instead of top path buccaneers because I did not want to clutter the screen too much with all those little airplanes flying around. And here I think the setup is complete. I don't know about you, but I think it looks like a freaking piece of art with all those sorted snipers. The whole map looks like one of those coloring books you used to do. But not one done by one of those hyperactive kids, but one done by one of those autistic ones who were so good you'd thought that the colors were actually printed by the manufacturers. So now we just go AFK until we run into some problems. And the first problem came at round 255, where a bad almost exited the map. But this was solved by just taking the tech bot off the nav arc and timing it myself to always get a fortified bad. But that only worked for two more rounds, and this is the point where I tell you what we're gonna use all that cash for. We're gonna sell and rebuy the Navarc Paragon several times each round to use the bad hooking ability more than two times per round and push this as far as we can. Round 265 needed quite a few rebuys to be able to complete it, and the very next round I could not get enough rebuys and time to complete the round, and it wasn't even close. I got a really large amount of bats this round. So round 265 is where it ended for Geraldo. Now what about Isili? As you may have guessed when you saw the large amount of money we had with Geraldo, Isili will do better. Isili got to round 270 without having to do any micro, but now that we're running into the same problem as in the last game, we'll need to start selling and rebuying. But this time we won't use the nav arc. We will sell and rebuy Isili and use her hex ability instead. We'll place her in range of a trade empire to increase the money we get back per sell and then level her up to level 20 and set her to strong before activating the ability, which has a zero cooldown as I mentioned in my hero comparison video. In that video I promised to do a high round game using this strategy, but that video has been pushed back a lot due to me wanting to do a lot of other videos a lot more than that particular one. But hey, at least in this challenge it happened to actually be a useful strategy. So while you may not have gotten a video going as far as possible in a normal game mode using the strategy, at least you got to see an actual use case of it. The rounds got closer and closer and eventually on round 283 I could not keep up, even when selling and rebuying as fast as I could. So that's where we will call it for this episode. Next we're doing magic only, which I think will be the most interesting one of them all, so make sure you subscribe for that and leave a like if you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.